Uh, let me ask you, did you ever have any uh, run-in with Meyer Lansky? Yes, we used to meet him in Florida during the 70s at the Eden Rock Hotel. We used to meet him, that sounds like plural, like multiple we, times, not just once. Oh, we met him a few times there. Yeah, we used to see every time we went to Florida, we would meet him. My uncle, me, Chucky, uh, Nick Rosen, one of his guys, was there. He had cancer uh, in his mouth at that time, and we were getting him drinking shots. You know, he had a, <laughs> a handkerchief here and drinking shots and all. It was, what, what it was, was exciting. Like? What was he, he was like? a great guy. I mean, he was, so he was a little old man walking a little dog, a little white dog, I remember. And he would talk about the old days, his uh, buddy Benny. And it, it was just exciting. They had something to do with... Uh, at Monte Carlo in a the casino there, they wanted to send my uncle mm -hmm. there with his wife. But my uncle said, no, I wanna, I'm going to go with my girlfriend. He said, no, no, you got to go with your wife if we send you there. And really? Yeah. So he was that disciplined to say you can't go with your girlfriend, yeah. you can go with your yeah, wife. Yeah, he told him no. Was no. it a values thing or, or we don't want it to be public? What we, was his reason? It was, I don't know, but he, he, you know, he felt like it, it wouldn't, it's not right to go with your girlfriend, I guess. Very interesting. The way interesting. they thought, yeah. Now, how did you guys view him? Did you view him as somebody that was one of the greatest earners of all time in the world. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I looked up to him like a god. I mean, Meyer Lansky. You read about him. You know, you hear all over, all over the world about this guy. It was amazing. It was amazing just sitting there listening to him and meeting and shaking his hand. Any you, you, stories that stuck with you that he told about Ben or that he told about just that, Costello you know, or any of those guys? He, just about Ben. He, you know, how much he liked him and uh, broke his heart when he got killed. But, you know, you, you can't do what he did. You know, you can't rob the casino you can't rob the mob was he as rich as everybody said he was you know i don't know he didn't okay. look rich to me but who knows i mean you know i mean the numbers they I say would, about him is like he had 500 to 500 million to billion dollars he must they, have been very very smart that's all i could say did you ever watch him in an interview he did with the israeli tv back in 1971 no i, I want to show this to you and see 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 how uh, uh see how you see this for yourself if he was like this when he spoke to you because here he's kind of playing off that he's just a regular guy, you know, that he's not connected at all. Here, this is the interview. Mr. Lansky, why are the American authorities after you? Yeah. Because a newspaper man started a campaign against me and it snowballed to such an extent that I guess it can't be stopped anymore. I was singled out for some reason they needed an image. And this has gone to an extent where it just snowballed, and I don't know how far it's going to go. And when did the uh, snowball start flowing? Well, actually, it started about 1965 when some newspaper man wrote an article that I have $300 million. Well, I wish I had a million dollars. I said many more things, remember, have been said about me. They accused me of making a president. Now, I don't know Mr. Nixon any more than what I read in the newspapers. And the closest I ever got to him is seeing him on television. They claim I have 50% of uh, Lebanon casinos, 50% of Monte Carlo. The Roosevelt sent me to visit Batista on a mission. Now, how ridiculous can we really get? This is just a global lie. Say it long enough and you'll get the people to believe it. So you feel that you're a victim of <laughs> what, do, what do you he's think about character. him when you see that? I think he's, he's a smart man. He's a character man. Uh, him saying that, when he mentioned Richard Nixon, there was a story my uncle told me about Chip DiCarlo, who was in prison at that time. He was dying of cancer, and they gave Nixon, well, Chip DiCarlo gave him like a half a million dollars to uh, pardon him. Half a million dollars to pardon him? Yeah. Wow. And how, how factual do you think that is, that story? It's been told by others or? I don't know. We well, could check it out, I guess. I Interesting. Mean. Nikki took you to sit down with uh, uh, Meyer. What was the reasoning for that? Was it just because you were I was, there? Yeah, I was his nephew. I was there. Okay. I mean, you could trust me. It was me, Chucky. It was our crew, Lawrence. Why was, why was Meyer comfortable talking to you guys? Well, they liked my uncle. I mean, he was really, you know. Meyer liked your uncle? He loved him. 
He really, every time we would come there, he would come over to the Eden Rock and, and see him. Why, why do you think? Well, he knew his reputation. You know, and my mother liked that. Yeah, he knew guys from New York that he knew, and he liked that. And how did Nicky look at, how did your uncle look at him? Oh, he looked up to him. Admiration. Oh, so. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. He really did. Would you question some of the stuff, like him being worth $300 million or him uh, having fixed the president? Would you say it's possible that he could have? Yes. It's possible that oh, he could I, have? Oh, I believe it, yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew he had something to do with Monte Carlo. He said it. So <laughs> he wanted to send my uncle there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some, there's some real strong uh, uh, stories about him that, you know, maybe we'll get into another time, but on how much influence he had, you know, with uh, uh, businesses, Cuba, politics, presidents, all of it.